Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Regeneration TV. I'm glad you decided to spend a few minutes with us and I hope it'll be worth your while. As you know, we've been on the topic of abortion and today we're going to do our final, um, our final message on it. And today the topic is what can we do about it? What can we do about abortion? And uh, maybe not over the whole world, but what can we do it, about it in the U.S. and what can we do about it here in our city and our friends? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I just want to review quickly um, of what we already know. I'm going to give you seven things that we could do um, that I think anybody can do. Christians, uh, is there anything we could do with this issue so big? There's almost 900,000 abortions happening in the U.S. There's about 1,700 that happen every day in the world. Is there really anything we could do about it? Yes, there is. And I'm going to give you seven points that we could do. Seven ways ordinary people can make a difference. So here we go. First thing you can do is, as a, as a believer, is you can pray. And I know that may seem like the last resort for a lot of us, but uh, here's what this scripture says in Ephesians 3.20 through 21, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So it says, him who could do immeasurably more than you can ask or think. We think abortion may be impossible to overcome. Maybe there's no way we could ever have enough room on the planet for all these people can you imagine that? 1,700 more people a day? How could we do it? But you know what? There's a way. We can figure it out. There's room. We can make this work. If there's a will, there's a way. And if we can pray, God can help. And that's the first thing we could do is we could start asking God to help with the impossible. Give us a better solution, God. The second way is we can start loving instead of judging. And this is probably, in my opinion, one of the biggest ones because... Most uh, girls or women have abortions because, one, they feel like they're alone and nobody's there to support them. Two, they feel helpless, like they can't support them. They don't have the resources. Um, and, uh, and, and the third one is that they don't want to deal with that kind of criticism or guilt or judgment from people. So here's my, um, uh, my encouragement to you and to me is that we need to stop judging. We need to stop criticizing Young girls, especially when they're pregnant. You know, I know that it's not the best thing to get pregnant at, at a young age. I know that it's, it's difficult and, may, and maybe, and it is wrong biblically to be having sex outside of marriage. But we need to stop uh, judging and criticizing people so much that they want to end it and end the pregnancy. We need to be there to encourage and support. And I know it's tough. But we need to be a people who don't judge first, but love first. We need to look past all that and love first. And I believe that you could change. That can change people because the reason, again, the reason why a lot of girls get abortions is because they don't get that. Most of what they get is judgment and they're afraid of it. But you, you're, as your friend or as a sister, as a brother, co-worker, you could be there to support and love like Christ did. Say, hey, we love you. We love the baby. Maybe you did make a mistake, but that's done and over. Let's do this right moving forward. And uh, so that's number two. You can start loving people. Number three is you can educate. Not only get educated yourself, but educate. And I'm not talking about going to get a degree in uh, you know, biology and, and how, to, how the all forms of the womb. That'd be great. But just get educated on is it really just a bunch of cells? Is it really just like a tooth? You know, is the baby really just a part of the mother? Do some research, and there's great websites you can do. Use liveaction.com, abort73.org, uh, or liveaction.org. Um, there's lots of others. You can do some research and look at um, uh, people who in the field who do this research, and you can get educated so that when people ask you, is this really a baby, you can have some answers. So get educated, and so you can... Um, talk about it because it's not just a bunch of cells. It's actually a rapidly developing, or it's it's actually oh man, I forgot already. It's a it's a genetically distinct, rapidly developing human being. All right, within nine months, you got a fully formed baby already. So that thing is fast. So that's number three: is educate yourself. Number four: vote accordingly. 
we vote on these types of issues in the polls, you know, for um, presidents, for governors, for representatives, vote accordingly. If we want to see some change, use some votes there. And I'm not saying use that only as your guide, but compare it to the most important things. Is this really a big issue? Should we consider that when we vote? And I would say yes, you need to. Number five, given support. You can help support places that help women, um, help women um, not, not encourage women to get abortions, but help them uh, go through the pregnancy. Uh, there's only three options for a girl. You can either, or a woman who's uh, found out they're pregnant, you can either choose to mother the baby, have the baby be the mom. You could choose to abort the baby, kill it, you know, have an a, a abortion or abortifacient. Um, or three, you can put it up for adoption, put the baby up for adoption. There's only three options. So what I'm suggesting to you is give and support to the places that are encouraging life for the baby. And those are centers. We have one here in Gilroy. Um, oh man, I can't think of the name now. Uh, Informed Choices. And that's what they do. They give, they give free care to mothers. They support them through. And even if you've had an abortion, they support you afterwards. Um, and so give and support to places. Volunteer. Help them out. They need some help. So that's another way you can get involved. Um, and, and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, yeah, okay, it would cost you some money if you decided to give, which would be awesome. They can use it uh, because it's not taxpayer funded. Not like, you know, Planned Parenthood does receive taxpayer dollars, but these other organizations don't. And give and support them. Number six, adoption. All right. And, you know, for you, if you're in high school or junior high, adoption is not an option, really. But, you know, maybe if you are... Uh, you know, if you have a family and you're looking for some more kids, uh, you can adopt or you can, uh, better yet, even you can support families who have adopted, encourage them, you know, help them out, take, go over and watch the kids, uh, you know, kids who are, uh, you know, one of the big proponents or reasons why a lot of people push for abortion, like in China, is because they're overpopulated and, you know, what if that happens here? I would, I, I think that is a really poor reason to do abortions because of population. That's a terrible reason. And we should never consider that. You know, we should always be, as Christians, always looking for life. And we got to have some ingenuity. We got to figure out how to do this. How can we make room? How can we, um, how can we do this so everybody can live? Um, so adopt, help families who've adopted, uh, you know, foster care systems get involved somehow, you know, I'm I looking for ways. I need to look for ways how to help with this. So help adoption centers, you can get involved there. They're all over the place. We can help. And the last one, abstinence and marriage. And as you know, you hear this all the time, we've tried abstinence. It doesn't work, you know. But as Christians, as believers, God calls us to that. God calls us to remain sexually pure before you're married. So Maybe it's hard to preach and teach that to people, but you can model it. For you as a believer, you can model this, and you can be an encouragement to the people in your, uh, in your, your peers that you're choosing to remain uh, abstinent until marriage because you do want to raise a family. You do want to have a husband or a wife to, to support and raise a family together, and you don't want to go through having an abortion or having the time where you have to think about it because you're young or stuff like that. But model this, walk this out, uh, and, and just by doing that, you'll be surprised how influential that is. So those are seven ways you can get involved to making a difference today. So we've talked about this whole, um, the whole thing about abortion, and now it's time to make it, to do something about it. You know, whether, if you're okay with pro-choice, you know, do something, you know, you go get involved, become an abortionist if you think it's so right. You know, I think that's what we'd say. It's not good, but we can't just ignore it. And, and for us who are pro-life, we can't just sit around and let this happen. I'm saying you need to do something, and I need to do something about it. And it could be as small as praying about it. As at night when you hit your ground on the knees, when you, before you eat your McDonald's meal, say a prayer to God. God, help us with this issue. Help me do something about it. And here's some ways. And lastly, uh, I want to read you a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was actually 
a German pastor during the time of Nazi Germany uh, in the you know the World War when they were uh, when they were killing Jews when they were torturing them gas chambering them putting in them in concentration camps this is what he said to the Christians in Germany he said not to speak is to speak not to act is to act he was telling them that you guys cannot sit around while this is happening people are dying out there and you're not doing anything about it you're not saying anything you're not trying to stop it and I think that goes for us too if this really is an issue of life or death if these really are human beings being killed what are we going to do about it? And I'm not saying go bomb a Planned Parenthood or go shoot everybody. Nothing like that. That Because that is not the way Christ handles things. We need to do things properly. You know, get involved with legislation, love. But I've given you seven ways that anybody can start doing. And I would encourage you to make a step. Start thinking that how can I do something about it? Because it is important. And lastly, I'll end with a quote. Uh, Ronald Reagan says this, Everyone who is for abortion is already born. So for us, you know, that uh, we have the option, but the people in the womb don't. So let's make a stand for them. Let's, let's protect their life and do something about it. So I hope this series helped you. At some point later, we're going to have an expert on to chat about it, but we're, we're pretty much over with this series. So I hope this encourages you, and I ask you to pray about what you can start doing about it. So God bless, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank <laughs> you.